Well, praise God. I just uh, am excited about Jesus. How about you? Amen. And uh, just talking about the things that are going on and the things that have been going on and uh, um, the uh, incredibly crazy world that we live in. Yeah. Right? Well, <clears throat> I just want you to know something. You have authority over all of that. You have it. You don't have to get it from somebody else. You got it when you became a believer. Amen? Because you have the authority that Jesus Christ has. You do. Amen? You have the same power inside of you to, uh, that uh, raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. God gave you that. That's called resurrection power. And resurrection power is a powerful thing. And I think so many people just don't realize it. We just don't realize it. We get, uh, we get so consumed and busy that we don't know how we were going to do praise and worship this morning. Right? Come on. All of us. And then nobody exempt. Amen. You know, that's just me and Josh. That wasn't you at all. You, you're just there. I mean, he's... But, but you know, we, we, we do all this stuff and we're so busy and you got 5,000 things to do and then the ice is so thick out there they have to use a, 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 a digging bar to chop the ice. And I had to have a guy come in and sand it. I had a guy came in here yesterday, the guy from D&J Towing, and sanded that lot because it was so bad. Because what it keeps doing, it just melts a little bit gets up to 40, melts a little bit, and ice is over again. And then just keeps getting worse. And, you know, so you just just be careful out there. <laughs> Amen. It's crazy, you know. It is crazy. But, um, you know, it's, it's winter time. Amen. Stuff happens in winter time. We did plow it and everything. But, yeah, anyway, here we are. But we're so busy with all these things and so busy doing all these things that on my heart, um, Mona and I both have been just praying and talking about this for uh, the last month, about really digging into our authority and what kind of authority we have. So I'll be talking about this more than today. It's just going to keep going on and what our authority is and how we uh, can overcome this crazy world that we live in. As you well know, Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you that each one of us are anointed. We are anointed people. You anointed us. You ordained us, Father God, for such a time as this. And you brought us here, Father God, as a family, a church family to make a difference, to have a, a sphere of influence and to touch hearts of people. And we just, uh, we, we really believe in uh, all the things, Father God, that uh, you've taught us in your word. We really believe it. We believe it. We receive it. And we thank you for it. And we bless this time in Jesus' name. I wonder if I should take the offering or if I should wait for people to come. <laughs> there are people coming in. There are just two cars just pulled in out there. And so I don't know. You want to do it? Why don't you do the offering when I leave? How would that be, Joe? Okay. That'd be okay? Well, Joe will do the offering when I leave. I got to leave at 10, so I will uh, let, let you guys take care of that. All right? And then uh, I'll also um, um, we're going to have some more praise and worship. Amen? Praise God. Anyway, our society has been plagued with humanism. Right? I mean, what, what is it? I mean, it is. It's, I mean, it is. It has gone to every spectrum. You know, uh, it, it, it's gone everywhere. It's gone from the business sector to the, to the uh, media to all the seven mountains, of course. It's just humanism, humanism, humanism. Everything is humanism. Even the church has had humanism creep into it. Good morning, people. Amen. Even the church has had 
humanism. <laughs> humanism creep into it, right? And I mean, it's just been so, so uh, devastating. There's days when I listen to some of this stuff and I go, how did we get here? Does anybody feel like that? It's like, how did we get here from there? I don't know. I, I don't know how it happened. You know, it just did. It somehow happened that we got from where we were to where we are. And I know that it's not uh, some uh, great phenomenon or anything, but I know this, that it has a lot to do with the demonic realm. And they want uh, uh, the devil, I really believe, is on his last ditch effort to, uh, to get Jesus Christ completely away from our nation. And they, they want a godless society, and uh, there's a ploy and all of that, and, and there's people that have bought into that, and it's so sad, and it breaks my heart. But I want you to know, we have authority over that. You have authority over the devil. And I'm not, now, we're not devil chasers, but we're not pretending like there isn't one either, because there is. And, and, and he is... Uh, He's, um, he's broken, he's cast down, and he has no hope. The devil's the only one that doesn't have hope. Are you, are you with me? Really, he, he has no hope. But everybody else has hope. And that's what we have for, for people. And we can do this. But this uh, acknowledging where we stand and what we can do about it is huge. The first thing we can do about it um, uh, is realize what we have. See, I don't like to be Christians that have our heads in the sand. We're not ostrich believers. You know, sticking your head in the sand and pretending like it's not there will not do much for you. Now, one day you'll wake up and it'll be gone. Because it's not, it's, that's, that's not what we need to do. We need to be informed. I believe we need to know the devil's playbook. And I don't have a problem with us knowing that. Now, you have to be careful. <clears throat> and I have to be careful. I should say it that way. I have to be careful <laughs> that if I look at that playbook too much, if I look at what he's doing too much, I start to get angry. <clears throat> uh, you, 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 you're with me? I start to get angry. And there, there is a, something called righteous anger. And, and, and I believe we have that as a church. I, I, and I, I believe that's okay. I believe it's okay to be angry at the devil. Amen? That's right. <clears throat> but we're not here to be angry at people. Amen? We're, we're not mad at people. We love people. We love God. We love people. And uh, um, honey, right at, Mona, right at 10, um, I'm going to come down and go and then... Uh, Angie will do some more praise and worship. So I know you wanted to come up for that. So I'm telling you, 10. Yeah. You're welcome. You will. <laughs> yeah. I just, we just talk back and forth and have our little times. I'm glad you guys bear with us. Amen. You know, it's all right to be a nut if you're screwed on the right bolt. Hey, man, come on. But anyway, guys, talking about this, acknowledging where we are, uh, the thing is, is that we need to acknowledge that. We need to know what's going on. But you got to realize something. Humanism does not acknowledge God. They, they, they do not. Humanism doesn't acknowledge God. A humanist becomes the God of his own world. Come on. That's what they believe in. They believe they're it, and they're the ones, and there's nothing better. Hey, man, and everything goes. Everything goes. And, uh, you know, if you're that way, it's okay. I had a, uh, I had a humanist uh, tell me one time that, um, oh, we, we believe what you believe. Really? You believe in Jesus Christ? You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and God raised him from the dead? Oh, yeah, he said. He said, oh, yeah, I believe in that. But I also believe. 
<laughs> and he starts listing it off, right? You know, I'm not going to go into all that, but, but he starts listing it off. But I also believe, you know, so, you know, every, basically what he told me in our little 15-minute conversation after a funeral that I preached, uh, uh, it, that uh, he, everything is okay. That's what, that's what it is. He said, well, we're not against you. We're not against you. You know, and I'm probably he himself wasn't against us. You know, he's not against the church. But I guarantee you, humanism is against us because it's from the devil. And they want to take God out. They want him out of our school. <laughs> Has that happened? Uh, yeah. uh, have you seen it? Hmm. I want to take it out of the workplace. Thank God for people that started to say Merry Christmas again. Amen. What happened? Wasn't it cool? This year it said Happy Holidays. <laughs> Happy Holidays, you know. Shut up. It's Merry Christmas time, man. And and that's what we, you know, that's what we believe in. It's Jesus' birthday and we're and we're Thank you, God, for him. And somebody said, well, that's not really when it is. Just don't worry about it. We're celebrating it then. You don't know when it is. I, the greatest theologians that I've ever met or read don't really know. They have some good speculation. They have some good things. He was probably born in the fall, probably born in September. But nobody, nobody knows for sure. And it doesn't matter. We're celebrating it. Amen. And you know what, again, have you noticed so much? many more people are lighting up their, their houses and there's more manger scenes and all of that? Did you notice that during the season? It was really cool. I was blessed by this year. It was really fun, amen? And so uh, we're not letting it go. That's our job. We're not going to let it go, amen? We're not going to let humanism destroy our God in our nation, amen? And... Uh, uh, there, just to, to realize there's a spiritual battle going on. There is. And we're the ones that are in charge. We're the church of the living God. We're the ones that break it. We break it in the mighty name of Jesus. You have all authority. You can stifle the devil with one word. In Jesus. Just say, Jesus. One word. Say it with me. Say, Jesus. I'm telling you what, he hates that. He hates that, and he flees. Amen. It is just amazing how he flees at that. Um, it seems that most people today don't realize what our choices, our words, and our actions create. Now I'm talking about the church. Watch out. We create stuff. We, we create our own, our own destiny. By what we believe, what we speak, what we, what, what, what we come out with. Amen. Amen. We need to speak life. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it will eat its fruit. What does that mean? Love it and eat its fruit. What does that mean? That means that when, when you're, you're spe you love what you're speaking, some people like to even hear themselves speak. Hello. Yeah, and they just love it. They just keep speaking this trash. I had a guy the other day. Now, I do have a little bit of a warped sense of humor. I know you guys don't realize that, but, but it does happen. And, and, and I just asked him, how are you doing today? He says, oh, I'm just living the nightmare. <laughs> now, he was just trying to be funny. And I laughed. It was funny. But you know what? That's not funny. That is not funny. You know, some of us have been through some nightmares, right? You know, it's not funny, but we don't realize the power of our spoken word. Did you ever notice the power of, I'm not even teaching on that today, but the power of a spoken word. Did you ever notice when you speak it, you can't get it back? I really want to, I want to go, I want to get it back, but I can't. Amen? Amen. You know, because some of our little behavioral styles uh, uh, speak before we think. Huh? There's even a better way to do that, as you said, not Joe, right? It never happens to you. Uh, <laughs> Joe said the, the answer is duct tape. <laughs> 
Amen. <laughs> Either way, it don't matter. But, uh, but we, we really got to realize that we're speaking trash. And I'm not exempt from this. <clears throat> Sometimes our humor is trash. And I have to really, I have to really walk, work on that. And that's, that's one of my issues, my heart issues that I'm working on this year. Not, as a, not so much as a New Year's resolution, but just something that needs to change in my life. I need to watch that, you know? I do. I, I see things funny. I do. And some things that I see funny really aren't, you know. But now, what really happened, was one of the coolest things ever that happened with that kind of a thing is when our son Tim, he was pronounced a, a death sentence. They, they said he was going to die. And there was 30 of us in the waiting room down there. It was like we were going to start a campfire down there and, you know, roast some marshmallows or something. But we all started laughing. And I'm telling you what, that was the best medicine. That merry heart that came out of all of us, we started laughing. It, that, that is one of the things that got us through. And then when Tim was goofier than a bed bug, man, he was crazier than a bat. He would just say the craziest things. We would just laugh. And we'd get him laughing. And I believe that that's one of the things that helped heal him. Amen. Amen. So I'm not talking, don't, no, don't get all too serious now either. I really believe many of us need to lighten up and live life and have a good time, amen? We need to enjoy life. I'm not saying be so serious that you can't laugh, but I'm saying watch our words, amen? Don't speak death, amen? And th that's all. It's just, that was an extra little tidbit there that is not in the notes, but it's not about the notes. It's about the anointing. I want to go to Romans chapter 6, verse 16 in the Passion. Look at that Shannon up there. Isn't that awesome? Shannon uh, uh, is uh, Greg Anderson's full-time nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not a good nurse. Join the club, me either. But it's sure good to see you. It's good to see you. We've all been praying for Greg, right? Everybody been praying for Greg? He's got a broken, uh, this bone right up here. Right? Ooh. Ooh. What is, what's it called? Humorous. It's, it's not, not right? humorous at all. That's not humorous. That's what the doctor said. Yeah. Yeah, we all think we're funny. We all think we're funny. But uh, at, right at prayer time, Joe will take some time to pray over Greg, right? We're not forgetting him. Amen. Amen. But anyway, let's go to Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10 through 12. And this is just awesome in the Passion. Now, these are familiar scriptures that we all learned. Probably, like, if you're as old as me, you learned it in the old King James. But it says, Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be... Amen. Huh? I'm in Ephesians 6. Ephesians. Yeah. 6 and verse 10. I'm sorry. It's just 10 through 12. I don't know what I If I said 16, I was just out in some other land. Uh, I flowed in and out. But uh, uh, I think we all do a little bit. You know, spirit, come on. That's all right. Ephesians 6, 10 says, Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Now, is that powerful or what? Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power overflowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you, what? It's already there, amen? You don't have to invent it. You don't have to make it out of cardboard. Come on. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Come on. 
Your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings. Get it? Come on. But with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Come on. We cannot pretend it's not there. He told us in the word it's there. Remember when we talked about the, all this sexual stuff? This uh, uh, Ishkar is a, is, a, is, is a small god. Back from the day, back in the day. And that spirit, that, that is this sick, warped spirit that has come into our nation. And it's everywhere. They think it's okay to have drag queens perform for, for, for kindergarten kids. Are you nuts? Come on. No, nobody can even think that. that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And all over. And it's just normal. But that, that's coming from those gods with the little G. See, what happened? They were gone. They were cast out with the, with, with the resurrection of Jesus. But see, in this complacent world that we live in, in this messed up humanistic world that we live in, they've come back and, 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 and bring back the, um, uh, in, in, this, this evil thing. You, everybody needs to read the book that uh, our, our what, what's your book? Jonathan Kahn. Oh yeah, The Return of the Gods. You need to read that book. Get it. Look at it. it it'll amaze you some of the stuff in there. I don't, I, <laughs> we've contemplated and prayed about taking a study on that, but I don't want to spend that much time on the devil. I just don't. And I really got that. Don't spend that much time on it. But we got to know he's there. That's right. and, I, and you need to know, and you need to check these things out for yourself, amen, and find out what, are the, what is happening. These are these little gods that have come back and they're, they're, they're little demons and they're trying to take us out. They want to take every good thing away from us. They want to take everything from our uh, uh, kids, our churches, the good people that are in uh, politics. They want to take them out. Have you noticed, have you watched this thing? 15 votes? Have, have, have you watched that for the speaker? For, for the Speaker of the House? Yeah, and you know what? Some people hate that, but I think it's great. I, I think it was really cool because what they had to do is they had to realize, hey, man, there's some people here that aren't putting up with your swamp. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And so we want to break that stuff. But, but see, that's the, the kind of stuff that's happening. Really, it shouldn't be like that. Our party should be come together and, and be together, but but they're not because they're divided. And you know, they've never read the scripture, a house divided will not stand. Hello? I wonder what's wrong. Come on, even, even, even the other side should be unified. We should all be unified that this is one nation under God. Amen. And that's what should happen. Yes, you're gonna have different ideas, all that. But see, that, that's so far gone that I don't know that it'll ever come back. But I do know this. The church will prevail. Amen? Amen? Or oh me. The church will prevail. And we will overcome this lie. We will overcome this lie of the devil that he has tried to take us out. Amen? We are not going to let him do it. We have a battle, but it's not with people. It's against spiritual forces of the demonic that influence them. The battle is not with people, but it's with Satan. And Satan does not um, use people. He hits people in a weak spot, and then they come against each other. Have you, did you watch that? Did you see how he does that? He goes into a weak spot. And that's kind of what I want to talk to us today about <clears throat> is this weak spot that we've all had. Anybody can admit it? 
I'm admitting it. I got some weak spots, man. And just as I was, I was going to the Lord with all this and really seeking Him about this new year and taking our authority, amen, I was just really seeing about where does the devil come in? Where does he come in? You ever had strife in your house? If none of you? Just, just me and Ben, that's it. Well, that, that, that's demonic. That's the devil. I want you to understand something. He can't come in on his own. I want you to understand this. The devil has no authority over you. None. He has no authority over you. But I'm telling you something today. You have to take your authority. You have to decide that you do not want this mess. You have to decide no. You know, over in James, I will uh, I'll look that up in my New King James. I, I just want you to see this because, and I know you've heard it, you know, somebody told me once we're going to keep hearing it until we get it. Are you there? Amen. There's a lot of things you've heard in the Word. <clears throat> Not everything's going to come out new, but I guarantee you we need to hear the Word. It doesn't matter how many times you hear it. And the more I hear it, the better I get it. Amen. James chapter 3. Um, Where did James go? There he is. James chapter 3. Um, <clears throat> in verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. What does that mean? Don't pretend like you don't have it. Hello? Don't, don't I go around acting like you're little Mr. Goody Two-Shoes and you're not. Because you have just as much mess as all the rest of us. This wisdom, <clears throat> when you don't own your stuff, now there's a lot in that verse, but I'm using that today for not owning your stuff. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Don't, don't lie and pretend like you don't have it. You have it. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. You know, and uh, self-seeking, that selfishness, is strife. Hello? Strife. We have strife. We fight everything. Everything. I'm telling you what, I, I, I grew up fighting. I did. My dad taught me how to fight. I was a 90-pound weakling or whatever I weighed, and, and that's how much I weighed when I was born, but... Um, I, I was a 90-pound weakling when I was in seventh grade. And, uh, and uh, my dad taught me how to fight. He taught me how to punch. You know, he taught me how to hit. He taught me how to take somebody out. And when I did it for the first time, I became a legend in my own mind. <laughs> I did. I'm tough now. I'm a tough guy now, man. I was, I was cool, and everybody thought I was bad. You know? And I was still a 90-pound weakling. I just knew how to hit. But see, we think we have to fight for everything. The only fight you have in you is the good fight of faith. Amen. Now, there's a time to fight. Don't get me wrong. There's a time to physical fight. There's a time to fight to defend the innocent. You fight to defend your family, your children, your, 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 your ladies, all, all that. We fight for that, and we will. And we will fight, and I don't believe in being sissies when it comes to that. You don't tuck your tail under and run. You fight when there's a time. When you need to protect somebody, I'm about that. But I'm telling you what, that's the only time. We don't need to fight the clerk at King Supers because 
you know, he, he, he went to a public school. <laughs> you know, huh? What? I gave you 50 cents. You know, you know, whatever. You know, you know, you can get mad at them and you can fight for your right. You know, you're going to get ripped off and you're going to fight for it. Where, where does it say we do that? Right here. It calls it strife. Where, where, where does he say, and this is my favorite one, man, the, the, the counter at the airport. <laughs> and some big old guys up there screaming at that little girl because they lost his bag. And I'm pretty sure it was her fault. Really? Really? You're cussing her out? You demand that bag back? Well, sir, it's probably at LAX, but there's nothing we can do about it until that plane... Thing went completely dead. It is deader than a mackerel. I will grab the. Uh, it's trying to come through, isn't it? I'll grab the. It's still its red light. That means it's dead. Um, I'm gonna grab that. Testing, oh yes, we got it. But 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 that's my favorite one when, when these people act like that. I know people, and I have people in my family, and I were one once, so I know them, who fight about anything. I was literally taught that you don't have to take any blank off of anybody. You, uh, come on. Come on. And, uh, and, and what does that mean? That means if somebody doesn't do something the way you want it, you're going to fix it? You're going to fight for it? You're going to fight for your right by God because I'm going to have my way. Is it worth it? And we, we're sitting around, you know, the Bible says at the end times men's hearts will fail them. You know, that causes a lot of stress on your heart, man. You fighting about everything? Are you kidding me? You're going to fight to make it right? No, you're not. I'm, that's not what this is about. This strife has got to break, and it has to break first in our home. I know I say this all the time, but our home is where it begins. Our home has got, we got, we got to break strife in our home. Don't allow it. We have this little saying in our house, only love is spoken here. And we're going to speak it till we see it manifest. <laughs> hey, man, come on. I'm not telling you we have that all the time. We don't. I would be a liar to say we do. But I'll tell you what, that is our goal, and that's what we want, and we're speaking it. Only love is spoken here. Hey, man, that's what we need here. Only love is spoken here. And let me tell you what, love isn't coddling. Loving isn't wah, wah, wah. Love isn't all that old oh, poor baby. No, forget the poor baby stuff, will you? Gr cowboy up and put your big boy pants on and let's go, go to the rodeo, amen? Because it is time to quit being a bunch of wimps. We have to tell the truth, amen? That is love, amen? God is love and God's love. He's the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, amen? And he is love, amen? That's who he is, amen? Love is the truth. We tell the truth, amen? We, we, we don't coddle and we don't pretend like it's not there. And, and I think the church has done a, a horrendous job at that, saying, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's eating your lunch and it's popping your sack, amen? Now, I am not talking about being a jerk. Let, let me tell you, it's not okay to be a jerk. You know what a jerk is? <laughs> anybody, 
A jerk is somebody that would come up to you and just tell you all this stuff and be right, but they did it in such a condescending way that you'll reject them and whatever they said too. Hello? Uh, there's this big word, and uh, Mona and I have this all the time. As I believe in kindness. Uh, how about you? Uh, isn't kindness a fruit of the Spirit? So I believe in our relationships, we need to be kind. We need to be kind wherever we go. And, and Mona always bursts my bubble on this. She goes, well, you just want everybody to be kind to you, but you're not kind all the time. I said I am most certainly kind all the time. <laughs> right? But you know what? I don't think we realize when we're not. I bark at people sometimes. You know, you ever do behavioral style stuff? It's not spiritual, I know. It's not biblical, I know. But it is soul realm. And you have a soul. Hello. And I really have studied behavioral styles in human, human life and human behavior. There's behavioral styles. There's actually 144 of them. But we look, kind of look at four different ones. You ever done Myers-Briggs or, or any, any of those kind of things? You know, there's a bunch of them. I like the DISC profile. That's something we do. And, and a D uh, is always, a D is a high, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, the, these want respect. They want respect. By God, they're going to respect me. I's want to be liked. S's want to be safe. And um, C's um, are always right, period. That, Robin taught me that because she's a high C. And, and uh, she told me one day, she says, I don't want to be right. I am right. <laughs> okay, then. But see, we have that in our soul realm. We have all that stuff in our soul realm. And we have souls, and, and, and we live out of our souls a whole bunch. Right? Let, let's just admit it. We live out of our soul. I mean, we live out of our soul realm. What I think, what I believe, how I am, my intellect, all these things. I, believe, I live out of my soul a lot. And so in that, we need to overcome my thinking I'm kind all the time by the Spirit. Does that make sense? We, we need to let the Spirit of God be kind. Lord, I want to be kind. I want to have a kind answer. The Bible says a kind answer turns away wrath. So that poor buffoon the, at the uh, airport, when that girl put his little order on the bottom of the stack and maybe on the bottom of some bottom of some other stack that might not be looked at for days, maybe he would have had a little more favor if he'd have been kind to her. Are you with me? It turns away wrath. Amen. Amen? And those people are so good. They're just doing their job. They're just doing their job. And people are just trying and they're doing what they can. And I'm not telling you they're all right. And some of them, some of them, you want to you want to put the slap right to their chops, and I'm there. I've been there and done that and received that. But guys, I want you to just realize we overcome all of this by the authority that Jesus Christ gave us, which is His Word. We need to speak life, and His Word says a kind answer turns away wrath. Amen? That is so simple. I can get it. Come on. Instead of fighting for everything, I was going to tell you another story, but it's too long, about fighting. I know this person that fights and fights and fights about everything, and they're going to fight even if they're right. I'm serious. You know people like that? They just want to fight. They fight everything. They fight everything. There's air. I'm going to fight that out. Yeah? It's like, my gosh, get delivered. Amen? But guys, we have the authority over this demonic, over this demonic humanism that has come into our land. We have the authority over that devil. And that is what it talked about there in Ephesians 6. Amen? Study it. Do it. It's time for me to leave. I bless you. I love you. We just pray wisdom over all of you. And we pray that you use 
everything that's inside of you to overcome this demonic realm that our nation, that our world has come into. Amen? Amen? We win, guys. Don't, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you everything's hunky-dory, but I'm telling you we win. Amen? Amen. We're winners. Amen? And so we're going to do that. But let's, uh, let's just say this prayer before we go. You never know who's saved and who isn't. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and that God raised you from the dead. I trust you as my Lord. I trust you as my Savior and my righteousness. Thank you for loving me. I receive you today as my Savior, and I thank you for salvation. Fill me with your mighty Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you all. We had a ball. I hate to leave, but I got to.